Somebody there, praise the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord is ready for you. Your miracle, your healing, your deliverance, your salvation is eager to enter into you there. Candidates of miracle, where are you? The Lord has seen you there. He will bless you. Tonight is my night. I said my own. Tonight is my night. The Lord confirmed that in your life in Jesus' name. Father, well, thank you. Always ready to bless. Always ready because you love. Always ready to shower your blessing upon us because that's your nature. And we are ready now to receive from you. My brother, my sister, my friend, the newcomer, everyone here, everyone there online, receive in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You can sit down in the blessing of the Lord tonight. We're looking at a very simple message. Yet, it comes with supernatural power in your life. I'm talking to you tonight on perpetually present possibilities of God's grace. Present, always present, every day it's there, perpetually present possibilities of God's grace. We're well, looking at Matthew chapter 19, Verse 25, in Matthew 19, verse 25, when his disciples heard, when they heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, who then can be saved? A rich man had come to Christ, wanting to know the way to life eternal. And the Lord showed him what to do. And instead of saying, I'm helpless, I don't think I can do that, I don't have the power, I don't have the mind, instead of saying, help me, he went away without another word. And then the disciples saw that, and he said, if the rich man could not be saved, if the intelligent one could not be saved, if the eager religious man that ran looking for eternal life, if the religious man could not be saved, if the strong, healthy man able to run, if somebody that came running, if he went away without salvation, who then can be saved? Well, he could have been saved. It was his fault that he didn't ask for help from the Lord so that he'll carry out what he needed to carry out to be saved. And so, but the disciples, they said, look at that man high. Look at that man great. Look at that man rich. And look at that man intelligent and eager. Yet, he could not be saved who then can be saved. That's when now Jesus said in verse 26, in verse 26, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men this is impossible. With men who are not thinking right, with men who are not seeking help from Christ to help them, from men, with men who do not expose the weakness, the infirmity, and the impossibility of them, and they just go away without considering the matter very well with men. This is impossible. But with God, tell me, all things are possible. Peter, you understand how you got saved? 
Because with God, all things are possible. Matthew, you understand? How you yourself got saved, and you are asking who then can be saved? With God, this is possible. And with God, all things are possible. Look at Zacchaeus there. You would have thought you could not be saved with God. All things are possible. Look at that woman that came weeping and shedding tears on the feet of Christ. She got saved with men. This is impossible. Obviously, the Pharisee that accommodated and invited Jesus to the house and saw the woman crying and the man for his sake was surprised what was this one doing here obviously with that pharisee if he had his way he would not have that woman saved but jesus said go in peace your sins are forgiven and she was saved because no matter who you are no matter what you have done in the past, if you leave it in the hands of God and you stay there, don't go away. With men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Your salvation is here. Your forgiveness is here. Because, because with God, all things are possible. You can be saved tonight. I said you can be saved tonight. Look at Luke chapter 1. Reading from verse 37. For with God, this is the angel that told Mary, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Let somebody shout amen from there. The healing of the incurable possible the deliverance of the tormented possible the answer to the greatest prayer you can pray possible possible for me you go through life happy you go through life confident you go through life you are kind of like walking on the don't you have problem don't you have challenge? Don't you have something that weighed you down? Yes, I do. But in the next minute, I'm going to tell the Lord. And I know with God, nothing shall be impossible. Thank God you are here tonight. All those things you have thought difficult, incredible, impossible tonight, all your mountains, the Lord will roll away. Three things, were, not three things now. I'm going to look at that, look at the topic. We're talking about the perpetually present possibilities of God's grace. I take that last word, grace. What's grace? G is goodness of God through the gospel. R is the reign of righteousness on the repentance and a in the abundance from the almighty for all that's grace that's grace we don't merit it nobody merits it and yet it comes to everybody for all and then see conversion with completeness through christ completeness anything missing in your life Missing in your body, anything missing in your family, completeness has come for you. E is exaltation by Emmanuel for exploits, and it's all that's grace, that's grace. And we don't miss it, it's not some, something we're toiling for, we're laboring for, we're arguing for, we're paying money for, all by grace. G, goodness of God. God through the gospel. It tells us in Romans, reading from chapter 2, reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness 
the riches of his goodness and forbearance. Uh, that's why he's patient. You know, when you committed sin, somebody said, okay, if God is there, I'm going to do this bad thing now. Let him strike me dead. You don't know God. God is not interested in striking you dead. He will not strike you dead. So you've done this, you've done this, you've done that. And all the same, the goodness of God. It still gives you the air to breathe. It still gives you the water to drink. It still gives you the solid ground to tread on. It brings the rain. It brings the sunshine. Still for the just and the unjust. Why? It's demonstrating his grace. Because everything is by grace. Adam, what did you do to be created? By grace. Eve, what have you done? What did you pay to even be created, to have a chance to live? By grace. Noah, how did you escape the flood? By grace. Abel, how is it your sacrifice was accepted? It's all by grace. It's the goodness of God in our lives. And as you have come here, that goodness will flow more abundantly into your life in Jesus' name. Despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and his long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. It is uh, the goodness of God that makes you to think, ah, I'm so bad, I'm so evil, I'm so sinful, and yet look at what God has done for me. There you are tonight, maybe you are not even sick. And it's not because you are a saint, because of the goodness of God, you are strong and fit as a fiddle. And uh, you, you say, uh, there's nothing to be proud about, I'm strong by grace. By grace is the goodness of God. That goodness of God now will make you to bend the knee before the Lord, and the goodness leads you to repentance. And uh, look here at um, chapter 11. We're reading from verse 6, Romans chapter 11. We're looking at verse 6. It says, And if by grace, the goodness of God, if by grace then it is no more of works, not the labor, not the tears, not the exertion of effort, all by grace, and everything now, Christ came, and he paid the price for everyone, and he's gone back to heaven, and the goodness is now flowing from Calvary, and flowing from the cross, and now, it will flow to you. It will flow to everyone. Uh, but I'm bad. That's why it's making it to flow. You can't do it by yourself. You cannot earn the goodness of God by yourself. That's the reason it will flow to you. It will flow to me. I said it will flow to me. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. And if it be of works, then it is no more grace. It says, otherwise work is no more work. Look at verse 22 there. In verse 22 it says, behold, therefore, the goodness of God. Behold, therefore, the goodness of God and the severity of God. Uh -uh. I, how, how did that one come in? And the severity of God. When God feeds you, God waters you and waters your garden. He butters your bread. He sugars your tea. And he does everything. And you need to even look his direction. Thank you. And I thank you by giving you my heart. My son, give me your heart. My daughter, give me your heart. But you refused. And then it sustains you. It gives you brain. And with all the same bad things you've done to disorganize that brain, it keeps on maintaining your good brain. 
<clears throat> he sent you to school and even things you thought I couldn't do. He makes you to do them. The goodness of God taking care of you, taking care of you. You sleep at night. In the night, you don't even know where you are. And in the morning, at the right time, you ought to wake, even without the alarm clock, something just happens, and God is concentrating on you, and he wakes you up. You go, you travel. Other people, they meet danger and accident, you come out free. No accident in your life. The goodness of God. And yet, a smoker. Yet, a drunkard. Yet, you are, they call them womanizers. And they may be manizers. Did you hear that before? Okay, if you've never heard, I created that for you now. Womanizers are there, and manizers are there and yet you keep breathing you didn't die okay he said if somebody commits that he will die and you're going to commit it and you came out you didn't die the goodness of god if you resist you reject that goodness of god eventually god will say now you cannot blame me the severity then comes. That's why it says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee, toward me, toward me, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut up. I will not be cut up. I give my heart, my life, to the good God who has been taking care of me even when I did not know him. And eventually he calls and I say this God who has been taking care of me, Lord, I come just as I am. Without one plea, Lord, I come unto thee and look at the goodness of god in acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth for the holy ghost god the father told the son i am specially anointing you with the holy ghost so that you can go everywhere alpha location online and heal everybody and let them have a taste of my goodness and our power who went about doing good doing good that goodness has come today doing good remember by grace they just came they didn't bring anything in their hand they didn't bring any gift in their hand they even came without taking their lunch with them and after he administered to them and healed them he said don't go yet sit down 50 by 50 by 100 and he fetched them all by his goodness that's the grace of god the goodness of forgiveness comes to you and the goodness of provision comes to you and the goodness of care sufficient care comes to you it went about doing good and healing all that's his goodness that's grace healing all that were oppressed of the devil it will strike the hand of the devil out of your life because he came to destroy all the works of the devil for god was with him now grace g that's goodness r that's the rain of righteousness on the repentant. The rain of righteousness on the repentant. Since Adam and Eve fell. And he fell from the height of righteousness. And he fell to the deepest depth of rebellion against God. 
humanity has been trying to climb up from that depth, climb, climb, the climb being from that well of sin, of rebellion, is slippery. And so they climb, they fell back. They climb, they fell back. And no man has been able in his own strength, in his own power, to climb out of that ditch of rebellion and get to the peak of righteousness. But now grace, the reign of righteousness for the repentant. Look at Hosea chapter 10 verse 12. So to yourselves in righteousness reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Now, look at the heavens that bring down rain. What can I do to bring down the rain? By grace. Can I pierce the heavens? Can I command the clouds? Let the rain come. No, only as God decides. He wants to give us good crop. He wants to give us great harvest. He wants to give us what will sustain our lives. And because of that, all by grace. He sends the rain from heaven. And it now says, you're sowing, you're sowing. But you need the rain to make the crops germinate, to make the crops come up and to feed your family and to feed the nation as you get some money from the crops you sell, you sow. But you can only sow. It's the grace of God that brings the rain. The same thing in the Christian life. That you can repent, you can cry, you can roll on the ground, you can pinch yourself, you can feel so sorry, sorry, sorry for what you've done. But the rain of righteousness by grace that comes so that the repentance alone and the sowing to yourself alone, the breaking up, the fallow ground alone cannot bring the rain of righteousness. It still has to be the response of God. It has to be the grace of God. And look at Isaiah chapter 55. And we're looking at verse 6. It says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. What does that mean? It can be found now for forgiveness. Seek the Lord. If you waste time, if you delay and you die, you get to the other side. Oh, I realize now. Forgive me. You didn't seek the Lord when you could be found, when you were here on earth. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. No, the rain fell while you were here. You had the chance. The water came. Water of life. Whosoever will, let him come. Take the water of life freely. You did not. You waited too long. And then after death, now you get to the other side. Give me, give me water. And to cool my tongue, it's late. And now, at this time, when the grace of God is available, and when the rain of righteousness will fall upon you, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he's near. In verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way. That's how we become repentant. Repentant. I'm sorry for what I've done. I'm sorry for my wickedness. I'm sorry for ill-treating uh, somebody living with me because it's not my biological son. It's a helper in the house. And I didn't deal well with 
well, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry for my lies. I'm sorry for my immorality. I am sorry for what I've done. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. You know what you are still thinking, that fellow hurt me, that fellow abused, insulted my father and when I become strong you are just thinking about it I'll deal with him forsake all those thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. That's the grace of God. You're penitent, you're repentant, you come to the Lord and the Lord will say, what have you been waiting for? And you waited until this day and uh, you know, he says, uh, you have come, everyone who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, he tells us, he says, for as the rain cometh down, it says, His mercy will come when you repent, as the rain cometh down. His forgiveness will come from heaven, as the rain cometh down. His uh, healing will come, as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither. But watereth the earth, he says, and he makes it bring forth and bird. Then it says that each may have or give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11, it says, so shall my word be. It's watch like rain will bring the answer and the solution to your problem. Amen. Amen. James chapter 5 verse 7. In James chapter 5 verse 7 it says, Be patient, therefore, <laughs> don't run away, stay until the end of the message because then we will pray and the rain of righteousness will come in your life Amen. your healing will come and then when we've uh, prayed and searched for salvation you will come because another rain will still come Amen. rain of miracle Amen. rain of manifestation of power will come in your life in jesus name it says be patient therefore brethren and then it says until the coming of the lord i need to tell you that until the coming of the lord that's the final coming of the lord that time it comes to take the saints the believers away but every day there is the coming of the lord for your forgiveness he'll come tonight and forgive you then I come tonight and save you there. He'll come tonight and deliver you from every oppression there. In Jesus' name, behold, the husband man waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and has long patience for it until you receive, until he receive, until he receive the early and the latter rain it will come Amen. early rain it will come Amen. when you're still early in life you're not you have not uh, you know gone there dumbo with that dumbo with that and you see at this time i'm still young this is the earlier part of my life the rain of forgiveness and the rain of freedom and the rain of salvation will come upon you but now you are the latter end. It's like now you're almost, you're living your latter days. Almost going. And so very soon they'll say, going, going, gone. Latter days. You will not wait until gone. Because there's no salvation in the grave. 
There's no salvation on the other side. There's no second chance. You're going, going, come in before you are gone. Come in before there's no hope anymore. The early rain comes. Well, talking about the children of Israel, when they sow their seed at the time of the sowing, that's what is called the early rain. And then at the time of the harvest, there is the latter rain. But in application to your personal life, early come, your rain is ready. Old come, the rain of righteousness it's ready for look at verse 8 in verse 8 it says be ye also patient establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth near now when the Lord comes the dead in Christ will rise when the Lord comes the saints who are still alive they'll be cut off to meet him in the air if you have not received the reign of righteousness and righteousness does not reign in your life until that time now Christ is gone the saints are gone and you're still on earth there will be the precursor of the suffering in hell is called the great tribulation and those who go through that tri great tribulation they will wish they die so as to escape but even if they die from the great tribulation they go to the greatest of torments and they will spend eternity in hell fire I pray that will not happen to you but this is the time to seek the Lord while he may be found and to call upon him while he is near and when the Lord comes you'll go with the saints to heaven G the goodness of God through the gospel R the reign of righteousness on the repentant A is abundance from the Almighty for all. A is abundance is by grace. And what could you have paid? What could you have done to have abundance? The abundance of the Almighty provided for all. And it's all by grace. Look at John chapter 10 in verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal. Uh, let me read it direct so that you can fully understand. The thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The thief cometh. He came to the garden of Eden. He see, they had peace, they had joy, they had contentment, and they had pleasure and they had every good thing in the garden of Eden the thief came to steal to kill and to destroy and he yielded to his coming that's why the lost the life of God eternal life they lost the provision in the garden they were driven out but let me tell you this the thief cometh there are some people that do not wait for the thief satan to come they invite satan they say ah satan you have not visited them and they say i know satan is there i will not wait for him to come they go to him they join a gang they go to satan satan is he is not he doesn't have time yet to come for them but they go to satan other people ah, why is it uh, you know uh, satan the devil diabolos and lucifer he has not come where well, you see and they go into idol worship they don't even wait 
for Satan to come to them, for the thief to come to them, they go to the devil themselves. They go for the one that will steal from them. They are writing letters to them, <laughs> young girls. You know, the Lord has created those young girls, young ladies, beautiful. And, uh, you know, they are the people, and they're almost naked on the street. And what they are scanty dressing and exposing all the delicate parts of their body. They are saying, are you fornicators? Where are you? You did not even come. Okay, I come to you. They invite. They invite fornicators. They invite adulterers. They are not waiting for Satan to come to them. They carry themselves and go to Satan. And you know, sometimes you have the son of a pastor, Bible believing pastor. And you know, they are protected, they read the Bible, and good future before them. And, uh, and they say, what, What's happening? They call somebody Satan, they call them Lucifer, they call him evil, they call him the destroyer. And uh, they look, son of a pastor, daughter of a pastor. And they carry themselves and they say, well, Satan, since you are too late in coming to me, I come to you. And he steals everything that the parents have put in their lives and he kills them. He destroys them because they themselves, they are responsible in carrying themselves to the thief. The thief will release you today. And everything he has stolen, everything he has got him from you to kill you and to destroy you, to pack you up and send you ahead of him where he and yourself would have spent eternity. Today, you escape. Look at that. The thief cometh, not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I I'm calm. Jesus is talking to you. The Savior is talking to you. The Provider is talking to you. I am calm that they might have life and that they might have it, tell me, more abundantly. That's grace. That's grace. We cannot pay for a judge. A teacher of that abundance, abundant life, abundant supply, abundant joy, abundant provision, and abundant glory that they might have life and more abundantly. The Lord do it in your life in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 5. Verse 17, for if by one man's offense death reigns by one, much more, much more they which receive the abundance of grace. Abundance of grace in your life today. Abundance of goodness in your life today. Abundance in the salvation of the Lord, in the freedom of the Lord, comes upon you today and continues in the future until you go to the great unlimited abundance in heaven in Jesus' name. G, that the goodness for you by grace. R, that the reign of righteousness available for you by grace. A, that's abundance from the Almighty for all. He would have all to be saved. He calls everyone, and the Lord is calling you tonight. C, is conversion with completeness through Christ. A conversion, that's by grace. That's by grace. You cannot dip your hands inside your heart and convert your heart. You cannot do it by yourself. 
You cannot dip your hand in your mouth and turn your tongue so that the tongue speak evil no more. It's only God that can turn and transform your heart, your tongue, your mind, your brain. That's conversion and it comes by the grace of God, not of the works that I have done. Not of the money that are paid as pastors due in the church. Not of the lanes I have walked on the path of religion. Nothing, nothing, nothing in your hand could give you that conversion. And in the completeness that we have in Christ. Conversion with completeness through Christ. Look at Acts chapter 3. Reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Conversion. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out. Uh, those days uh, when uh, we were, you know, still in the primary school. Uh, they gave us a pencil with eraser. Uh, when we mistakenly write something that we shouldn't have write, that eraser, we're all beat on that, and it takes away the pencil. Then we, were, we went to the secondary school, and now we were not using just pencil, we're using the pen. And they gave us the meal team so that when we have written something that's not right, that's not right, then we put the meal team there and it's gone. And now we were not just using pencil or pen, we're not typing, we're typing. And as we type some, oh, that's not right, we now have, uh, what do you call it now, uh, that liquid you put on it and then you can type for tea when it's dry. And it's like all those things are forgotten now. The pencil, the eraser, the meal tinner, and the correcting liquid. They cannot blot out sin. That one that we can deal with the work of our hands, with the intelligence in our heart, they cannot deal with sin. But the blood of Jesus will wash away, blot away all your sin in Jesus' name. What can wash my sins away? Tell me. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And you can't pay for that blood. The eternal Son of God died and shed his blood for you. And that's how all our sins of the past can be blotted out. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You are converted and then your life is renewed. Refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, it said, Unto you first, God hath been raised up, his son Jesus sent him to bless you. He has sent him to you tonight to bless you. Are you going to receive the blessing? It says, In turning away every one of you, from his iniquity. The Lord will do it. There's conversion. There's completeness in Christ. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of of the Godhead bodily. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, and ye are complete in him. And ye are complete in him. Forgiveness is only complete in Christ. Freedom, only complete in Christ. Salvation, only complete in Christ. 
healing only complete in Christ provision only complete in Christ it is Christ that brings completeness into our lives and it makes us ready and complete for heaven if you have not met Christ no matter what you are proud of I am this I am that you have not met Christ you do not have the completeness that makes you ready for heaven but today as you come and he gives you the conversion with completeness in Christ thank God you'll be ready for heaven I will be ready I will be ready the Lord make you ready complete in Jesus name and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principalities and power in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 17 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away old lifestyle pass away old bad habits pass away old immoral life passes away old weakness and wickedness all that pass away and it says behold all things are become all things are become new said all things are become new now you went to buy some plates and cut layers and as you get the plates you see that you know they're supposed to be new and you have stain here stain here stain there you scratch it you scrub it you pour water the stain is still there uh -uh. i paid for something new why are they giving me this and i am part of the sides uh, part is broken up little 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 here so I cannot use this. And you take it back to them. You say, I got this here. Look at this. Look at this. I bought something new. But all the old stains are there. Are you recycling the plates that the dirt that I had, it had before is still there? Now, God does not recycle our bad lives. And still allow the stain and the spot and the evil and the small small things there no it takes away all the old and it brings every new branch new your life tonight as christ takes hold of you will make you brand new in jesus name Look at verse 21. In verse 21, it tells us, He, for he has made him to be seen for us. He put all our sin on Christ. He knew no sin by himself, but he put all our sin on him that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen? Amen. Now you are new. I said now you are new. You come to Christ and he washes and cleanses you with the blood that he shed for us on the cross of Calvary. And now you are not just righteous. He now imputes, imparts, covers you, envelopes you with his own righteousness. When you give your life to the Lord tonight, you'll be converted and it will make you complete. Make me complete. Say it well. It's happening tonight. G, as we look at grace, the goodness of God through the gospel. R, 
the reign of righteousness for the repentance and a abundance from the almighty for all no exception and uh, c conversion with completeness through christ e exaltation by emmanuel for exploits the lord will lift you up i'm going to say it again so you can have the proper response the lord will raise you up yeah. in ephesians chapter 2 verse 5 even when we were dead in sins as quickened us together with christ by grace are you saved amen yeah. look at verse 6 and as raised us he raised him up he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus up 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 <laughs> you see there are people who think they are saved and are still looking down and they are still looking sideways and when those things down when you see, you're still concentrating on them. You're taking your attention. You're taking your mind away from Christ on the throne. And you're looking down, looking, or you're looking side, looking side. And they have your attention. They have your heart. They have uh, the decisions of your life. They have all the things that make up your life. Because now, here and there, but now... He has raised us up. He has raised me up. He has raised me up. And now you are exalted by Emmanuel, that Jesus, and you remain with him. And now you will do exploits. Exploits, miracle, will be your portion. After you have received you will share with other people. You get healing, you also give healing to other people. You get deliverance, you also give deliverance to other people. Who are the people exalted by Emmanuel tonight? And you do exploits. Brother, exploits. Sister, exploits. Young boy, exploits. Young girl exploits. John chapter 14, reading from verse 12. John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, certainly, certainly, assuredly, assuredly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, believes on me he believes on christ keeps on believing on christ as the one that changes not believes on him as savior as healer as conqueror he that believes on me the works <clears throat> the works i do he shall do also does that amen reach heaven? Yeah. The works that I did. Exploits, the works that I did, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to the Father. What's he doing there with the Father? He's making intercession for you. He's praying for you. If you are not saved yet, he's praying, he's saying, save him tonight, save him tonight, save him tonight. If you have problem, he's there with the Father. I'm praying for you tonight. Deliver him tonight. Break the yoke out of his life tonight. And the Father always answers the prayer of the Son. He will answer the prayer tonight. And then, after you've got 
the healing. That hand that I said should raise up, you raise it up, then you lay the other hand on yourself, you are healed. Amen. That hand you raised up is anointed. Then you go back home. If daddy is sick, his mommy is sick, if your siblings are sick, that hand, that hand you raised up, you're going to lay it on them like this, and they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Yeah. If you go home and you do that, you'll come back tomorrow, the final day, you say, I was healed, and I laid hands on him, on her, and she was sealed. You come and give your testimony. Because we were saved, were set free, we are exalted by Emmanuel to do exploits. Ephesians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, now, when is your miracle? When is your healing? When is your salvation? When is your joy unspeakable? Say it, say it, say it. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek. Above all. We're asking for salvation. He says he's able to do it. We're asking for healing. He's able to do it. We're asking for deliverance. He's able to do it. We're asking for peace of mind. He's able to do it. And he's even able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That power walking you right then. And in verse 21, it says unto him, the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, throughout all ages, and we have not gone to the end of the ages. Here we are today. Your life will be glorified to the Lord. Then it says, world without end amen heaven has stamped amen on your request on your desire now the grace of god is available available for you the goodness of god for you the reign of righteousness for you abundance by the almighty for you conversion completeness for you exaltation by emmanuel for exploits for me for me it's about an eyes closed we've seen what's available we've seen that the goodness of god forgiveness salvation it's available. Freedom available. Anywhere you are, eggs bowed and eyes closed. You want all this, the whole package of grace to be for you. You raise up your hand. You raise up your hand. You are in except you count yourself out. You have except you make yourself to be the half not. But the goodness of God. The forgiveness of God available for you. Raise up that hand. God bless you. God bless you. Online, do the same. Over the radio, do the same. On the television, do the same. YouTube, in any way, any handle you are using to listen to this message, goodness has come for you. Reign of righteousness has come for you. Abundance. From the Almighty has now come for you. Conversion. What completeness has now come for you. And then exaltation by Emmanuel has now come for you. Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. You identify yourself. This is mine. I receive. I claim. I accept. 
Raise up that hand and stand up. God bless you with everything was spoken about tonight in Jesus' name. Just close your eyes and tell the Lord, Lord, I come. I turn away from my sin. I turn away from my evil. Now, oil and water do not mix. It's goodness and our bad life, they will not mix. It calls us to repentance and we push away and we kick away all the evil and allow the goodness, the grace, the forgiveness, the salvation to come in. Oil and water will not mix. I'm praying with you now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. You're a good God. You're a loving God. You're a gracious God. And you said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. All these have come for your goodness. They've come for the reign of righteousness. They've come for the abundant life in Christ. They have come for conversion and completeness. They have come that you lift them up from the valley of rebellion unto the mountain top of your righteousness. Lord, answer their prayers. Save them. Forgive them. Blot out all their transgressions and bring the joy of your goodness and bring the overflowing rain, the flood of rain. Whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life freely. Give unto everyone in Jesus' name. Affirm their conversion. Confirm their conversion. Lord, I pray you eliminate every evil sin. Eliminate all the condemnation. Eliminate all the guilt. And take away eternal punishment that was waiting for them. Now they are forgiven. Now they are saved. Now they belong to the kingdom of God. And I pray from this beginning, they'll go on and on and on in the enjoyment of the grace of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody say, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. You are blessed. You are saved. And those of us sitting down, because you have been saved, the grace of God, the goodness of God will keep on flowing, overflowing in your life. We call on a minister tonight to lead us in this counseling. And then after that, I'll come back. Healing is ready waiting for you. Amen. So, counselors, position yourself right now. Do that quickly. Please go around. Don't stay one place. Write their names very clearly. Those who cannot write, assist them. Please move round. The very back. If you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after pastor's message this evening, there is a link below your player. Click it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television, and you just gave your life to Christ. Send your name, phone number, 
and you give your life to Christ, send your phone number and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus 234-195-444-9263. I repeat again, plus 234-915-444-9263. There will be a special meeting, lunch hour with Jesus for all those who gave their lives to Jesus tomorrow by 3 p.m. at the venue for the lunch hour behind that story building there's a tent there make sure you're there tomorrow please cancel us make sure you don't leave anyone There will be a special believers banquet for all those who gave their lives to Christ during this crusade on Sunday, 1st September 2024 in all the churches globally. More details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet Alpha Locations Believer Banquets on Sunday, like I've told us, 1st September 2024. The venue for the banquets is all over. And as you come, the Lord will bless you. Those of you that are sitting, you'll be preparing yourself because tonight, the Lord will locate you. Counsel us, please make sure you move around. Those who cannot write, you assist them. Now that you have given your life to Jesus, no more telling lies. You tell them the truth. Your name, your address, where you are living. If you have given your life the first, second day, third day, don't need to give your name again. Thank God for those who are praying. You will not miss your miracle tonight. Counsel us be fast. Once you get set, you raise up the flag. Remember, tomorrow, Tuesday morning, is the final finale of ministers' conference through professionals. You cannot miss it. Today was great. Tomorrow will be fantabulous. Make sure you invite your friends. Tomorrow morning, by 7.30, don't miss it. Then in the evening, Tuesday, is the crusade, the last day of the crusade. I will invite my friends. Can you tell your neighbor? I will invite my friends, my neighbors. Because tomorrow, 
You dare not miss it. Counsel us. If you are true where you are, can you raise the flag up so that I'll see? Please be fast. At the very back, make sure we reach there. By my right hand side, if you are finished, can you raise the flag up? Let me see. Just be getting ready. Tonight, there will be the reign of power. Reign of miracle. When you are finished, don't leave the place. Just stay with those who have challenges. Because you will see miracle tonight. Stay there with them. Counsel us, make sure you touch every area. If they have not come your end, you can signify. On the middle, if you are finished, can you wave the flag? Let me see. Okay. By my left hand side, if you are finished, can you wave the flag? Raise it up. Okay. Okay, I'm seeing this. At the very back, if you are finished, wave that flag. Let me see. Okay. Thank God for those who are praying, preparing themselves. You will receive the touch of God tonight. The very center, can you wave your flag? Let me see. Center. Okay. As our pastor will be coming up now, get ready. Amen. Amen. Your miracle will reach you there. Amen. Healing will reach you there. Amen. Deliverance will reach you there. Amen. Now is my time. You raise up that hand, you lay the other hand where you have any sickness, any infirmity, impotence, whatever. And the Lord will heal you now. Amen. All by grace. Free. You don't pay anything. Free. You don't have to go and come. Available right now. Amen. And it is yours. Amen. 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 Father, in Jesus' name, Amen. 
we come with joy. We come with assurance. We come with confidence, knowing that your goodness will not pass us by. I pray, Lord Jesus, as we went about doing good, healing all, no exception, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And you're still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do it for your people in Jesus' name. At that time, those who were lying on stretches, they came up. At that time, those who were blind received their sight. Those who had issues with blood or blood, they were cured, they were healed. The same here tonight. Everywhere we're connected together, send forth your healing virtue on anyone, everyone in Jesus' name. With joy, with trust, we we'll receive our healing. We we'll receive our deliverance. Blind eyes, receive your sight. Brain problem, receive the solution. Swellings in any part of the body, come out in Jesus' name. Deaf ears, Dumb tongues, hear and speak in Jesus' name. No incurable disease in the presence of God. Also, be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. HIV, AIDS, be healed in Jesus' name. And yeah, be healed in Jesus' name. Asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. And all those things walking about in the body, come out in Jesus' name. Destroy all the works of the devil. Sickness of any name, any type, any shape is the work of the devil. Lord Jesus, destroy the works of the devil in everyone, in everybody, in Jesus' name. Here at the Alpha location, Jesus, loving Jesus, compassionate Jesus, touch everyone, heal them. Get them out of that wheelchair. Take the crutches away from them. Give them strength. Give them energy. Give them power to do what they were not able to do before. On my right hand side, healing and deliverance. Center at the front, healing, deliverance. By my left hand side, healing, deliverance for everyone. Online, deliverance, healing, dominion, victory for everyone. And everyone without exception, the love of God now operates in your life. You have his goodness. You have the reign of righteousness. You have the abundance of the blessing of God. You have completeness of your miracle. He has lifted you up from your sickness, from your infirmity. You are healed. I am healed. Let demonstration, manifestation, performance come to every life right now. In Jesus' name we pray. You got it. I got it. Do what you are not able to do before and demonstrate the manifestation of the power of God in your life. Put your hand together for